Hi viewers! For those of you who watched my last video, you might remember that I said I would be going back to my LCS to see if he had any more King Chuck coins, as I was a bit pushed for time last time. And uh, I did go back and I went through trays and trays and all I found was one lonesome King Chuck coin. Uh, now, obviously, I didn't pay the ticket price and apparently the ticket price is for people who pay by card and uh, I will of course always pay with cash so uh, you get a discount on that so anyway he did have one lonesome King Chuck coin which I bought and of course I will just test that not that I've actually seen anyone post posting videos on fake King Chuck coins yet <laughs> I dare say it uh, will happen but uh, Yes, the King Chuck coin is legitimate. And actually, before I move on to, oh, I will do the silver. The other coin I bought was this. It's a uh, 2007 uh, Britannia silver Britannia. So these uh, older Britannias were struck in what's called Britannia silver which is 0 0.958 and not 0 0.999 or 925. And um, anything struck in 958 uh, has a huge uh, collector following um, because there's, you know, there's not that much of it. There's plenty sterling and there's plenty 999, but not that much struck in Britannia silver. So even from a, uh, you know, a tie pin or a, or whatever, if it's struck in Britannia silver, it always uh, fetches a good price. Now, for those of you who've been following me for years, will remember that I used to pick up loads of these Britannia silver Britannias from the same shop, and uh, I would pay between 15 and 20 pounds for them. And, uh, and of course, today, as we know, <laughs> they're now Yes, if you're paying by card, it's going to cost you 40 quid for one of those, which is double spot, I believe. I think uh, spot's around £20 an ounce. But it is a very beautiful coin, and even though they weren't uh, intentionally struck as proofs, it, as you can see, it is very much proof-like from my camera reflection. Now, uh, there was a reason I bought this because uh, all of those that I had years ago, I traded with all my friends over in the States, and uh, I didn't have one. But I did have the uh, COA for it, so I thought, uh, oh well, you know, get a coin with a COA, and uh, it's uh, probably worth more with the COA, as I mentioned in my previous video. So I treated myself to a bit of <laughs> overpriced silver. Well, not just that one actually, this one was overpriced, over, well, overpriced. Um, so with, uh, you know, silver and gold being very high at the moment, uh, I dipped back into a bit of numismatic silver, as many of you know that I like to do that. And there was a reason that I bought this um, two shillings, uh, Queen Victoria 1887, uh, not just its uh, high grade, uh, and it certainly wasn't even <laughs> for its price, <laughs> although that's uh, not my price, of course. Um, I thought to myself, uh, I'd actually put a year set together, because one of my friends had done that, and I thought, uh, yeah, I've, I've got a few 1887s, so I'll put a year set together. So let's have a quick look at what I have got to go with the two shillings. I've got the 1887 crown, which is in very nice condition, but I have had better over the years and uh, traded them with all my friends in the States. But uh, it's uh, still a fairly nice coin. So you've got the crown and then the half crown. Oh, that's 1889. Oh, I thought I had an 1887 somewhere. I have somewhere. <laughs> I picked up the wrong one. <laughs> um, yeah, so, so that's the uh, half crown, 
which I've got somewhere, but I must have picked out the wrong one. And uh, the double flooring, which some of you may have seen before. And uh, this is, uh, again, a particularly nice grade double flooring. And that is the correct year, 1887. Um, and, uh, and on obviously the two shillings. So, uh, I also have, which I didn't dig out, a half sovereign and, uh, and I'd like to, uh, you know, make up the complete uh, silver and gold set. I'm not too worried about the coppers, but a silver and gold uh, year set, if I dig out the right to two and a half shillings, <laughs> instead of 1889. I'm guessing it is 1889. Yeah, it is, yeah. Um, not 1887 like I thought it was but anyway so uh, that's my plan to uh, put a set together of the silver and gold 1887 and now the other thing I picked up now what's interesting is he seems to have now split the shop into um, collectibles in one side and coins in the other but in the collectible side she had trays and trays of these various crowns, which uh, if you're in the UK, you will uh, remember the probably the Queen's Silver Jubilee and all the different uh, commemorative crowns, Charles and Diana and all sorts of things. And they have a face value of, I think, 25 pence. Um, but anyway, these, I went through trays and trays of them, trying to find uh, 51 crowns but um, I only managed to pick up these Churchills and we'll just do a comparison for you so you can easily see the difference between uh, silver and non-silver and I'll have to hold my hand at the bottom because <laughs> yes the copper nickel uh, Churchill crown and I'm sure some of you all think to yourself yeah I know what you're going to do with that CCT yeah and you're absolutely right I'm going to turn those Churchill crowns into spinning tops and that's why I was looking for the 51 crowns in hundreds of <laughs> three trays of those coins Mass and I, I don't mean trays they were literally baskets <laughs> like three inch deep baskets full of them and I couldn't find a single 51 in there <laughs> but uh I've done these spinning tops out of the Churchill crowns before and they turn out quite well and um, I told her I'd uh, make one for her and take it in but uh, anyway so 50p for those and uh, we'll leave that we'll move that the other thing I found in the 50 pence tray was a pound <laughs> so uh, I got a pound for 50 pence now you can still, I believe, send these in to uh, change them. I don't think, you, there might be some certain banks you can take them in to change them. But uh, I thought for 50p, I'll have a, uh, a 1983 pound coin. I think I've got a proof pound coin somewhere. Um, but yeah, that's what our pound coins used to look like. Uh, when they first come out, they were just that solid. And then they started doing them in this... Um, by by metallic i think they called it um and this one was found in our change <laughs> and uh, it's obviously done to uh, um, promote some business or something dirty disco whatever that is i'm not sure but uh, i've been to a few dirty discos in my past anyway so a pound coin for 50p and some churchill crowns and um, the last thing to mention is uh, yesterday we got our first King Chuck coin in our change. My wife uh, was just about to hand it over in a shop and it felt different in hand. So it's our uh, first actual um, circulating King Chuck coin that we've actually had. So I haven't bothered asking them for at the post office because obviously they're going to turn up in your change sooner or later. And, uh, as it did. <laughs> uh, anyway, for those of you wondering about the uh, slide, 
this should be up on eBay later. This is Black Ash. I've only ever done one of these because I managed to uh, scrounge a bit of lumber, uh, which was only enough to make one. And um, and I bought this as ash. And when I machined it up, it transpired it's actually black ash, which, as you can see, is uh, uh, prettier than uh, just ash. Yeah, gorgeous bit of grain. And uh, I'll probably have enough to make about five slides. But uh, if you want this one, you can either email me or it will be up on eBay. Anyway. I always say keep calm and keep stacking and I'll uh, catch you on the next one. Bye!